section 1.5, uh, we're going to be talking about the dividing segments and angle measurements and getting names of things that do the bisecting or the trisecting as we see here. So a segment bisector is a line, ray, or seg segment, or point, bisects a segment if and only if it divides the segment into two congruent segments. So picture format would be here's A, here's B, M right here. M could be a bisector. I could make I could make this a line. This could be a segment bisector. However you want to, whatever this thing is bisecting, it's a line, ray, segment, or a point, it's still going to be the segment bisector. So it's kind of like the midpoint idea, but it doesn't have to be, midpoint has to be a point. Uh, segment bisector can be a line, ray, segment, or even that point. All right. A segment trisector, same idea, but you have two lines, rays, segments, or points trisect tri meaning three that's correct a segment if and only if it divides the segment into three congruent segments. So a picture like that would be if you had something, here's A, let's say that's D, oh, we got B and C, so these would end up being congruent, all three of them. An angle bisector, now we're talking about angles. So let me draw a picture first, and so we have an angle. Here's A, we got B, we got C, and then there's D in the interior. And we can say that BD bisects angle ABC if and only if angle ABD is congruent to angle DBC. That means these two angles have to be congruent, and that angle is being bisected. Angle trisector, same idea, but this time an angle, instead of being bisected, will be trisected. So we'll use a similar picture, B, C, but then we'll have D and E in the interior. So in this case, B, D, and B E um, trisect angle A B C if and only if all three angles that means A B D has to be congruent to D B E which has to be congruent to E B C for all of them to be congruent. Let's jump into the examples. Example one. BC bisects AD. So BC is by doing the bisecting, is doing the bisecting, what segments are congruent. If BC is doing the bisecting, that means this piece and this piece are congruent. So we need a letter in the middle, let's say E. So that would mean that in this case, AE, segment AE, would congruent to ED. Example two, name the bisector. Well, we got angle ADB. So we go from A to D to B. We got angle C, D, B. So this angle, this angle are congruent. So what's doing the bisecting has to go from D to B. 
meaning that ray db is the bisector. Example 3, QD bisects angle AQR, causing these two to be congruent. Angle AQR, the whole big angle itself, is 61 degrees 39 minutes. We want to know how much is DQR. So we only want a piece of that, which in, the, in our case is half of that. So what are you going to do? You're going to take 61 degrees 39 minutes. You're going to take half of each one. Half of 61 ends up being 30.5. Half of 39 is 19.5. So we can't leave it as that. Well, half a degree is how many seconds? 30. So this is saying this is 30 degrees, 30 minutes. This is 19 minutes, and then half of a minute is 30 seconds. So we can combine these two. Final answer, 30 degrees, 49 minutes, 30 seconds would be half of this right here. Example four, is ABC bisected? ABC trisected is what we're looking for. So are all three of these going to be congruent? Well, what do we know? This one is 6x. 2 is 7x minus 4, 3 is 10x minus 17, and the whole thing is 71. So what can we do? All three added together have to equal 71. Well, let's combine them. We get 23x minus 21 is equal to 71. Add the 21 over. Divide by 23, x equals 4. So now we have to plug it back in and see. Well, measure of angle 1 is 24. Measure of angle 2 is 28 minus 4 is 24. That's a good sign so far. And then we do 10 times 4, which is 40 minus 17 is 23. So no, this is angle a, B, C is not trisected. All right, example five, H and R trisect E and M. Well, if something's a trisector, that means all three pieces have to be congruent. So we're solving for X here, and then we want to figure out um, the length of it. So we can say, let's figure out x by setting 3x plus 4 equal to x plus 8. Solve. x is 4, so x equals 2. That means if all of them are um, the same length, that means 3 times 2 plus 4 is 10. So that means if this is 10, this is 10, this is 10. So the length of EM has to equal 30. Last but not least, we got, we're got turning over not just equations, but we're starting to factor. So in a factoring example, the first thing to do is see if there is a common uh, multiple. So you look at them, they at least all have an X, and they all have the number 5. So you can pull out a 5X, leaving you with 2X squared minus 7x minus 4. Now you can factor by grouping. So you can take the first term, multiply by the last term. So you want two numbers that are going to multiply to negative 8, but add to negative 7. So what are two numbers that multiply to negative 8, but add to negative 7? How about negative 8 and positive 1? So we get negative 8x, positive 1x. This guy comes down, this guy comes down, he stays until the end. Group the first two, group the second two. So on the first group, you can pull out a 2x, leaving you with x minus 4. The second group, you can't pull out anything. So we leave a, a, pull out a plus 1, 
and we left with x minus 4. These are the same. So yes, we did it correctly. We get 2x plus 1. That's these two. And then we get x minus 4. And then the 5x comes down like it did from the beginning, and we factored completely. That takes us to the end of section 1.5.